Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, and for the next couple of videos, let's dig into session players. Session players introduced with Logic Pro for Mac 11 and Logic Pro for iPad 2 about a month ago now, bring so much opportunity and creativity to your projects. I mean, you literally have bandmates in the box. But if we're being honest, these brand new session players kind of bring some added complexity with them as well, right? Now, Prior to Logic Pro for Mac 11, when we just had Drummer, it was pretty easy going. You just load a Drummer track, you play with the controls in the editor, you're pretty much off to the races. But with the brand new bass player and keyboard player, the editors have been expanded upon. We have the new core track, pitch source. There's so much to consider to get going with these session players. So for today, I want to focus on the core track and help you get these session players moving in the right direction for your music and your projects. So let's dig into it. Let's start out by loading all three session players into an empty project, and then we'll dig into the core track and how to make the most of it for your songs and projects. Of course, when we create a new track, we have the option under session player to choose either drummer, bass player, and keyboard player. And notice in the bottom half of this new track dialog, we have a section called details, with which you can choose the performance style. So for drummer, we have all the acoustic drum styles, electronic drums, and percussion. Under bass player and keyboard player, similarly, all different styles. But for bass player and keyboard player, we also have this option to load a default chord progression for new regions of the session player type. So I'll start out with a keyboard player playing block chords, and I'm going to load the default chord progression for keyboard player. Let's click Create. All right, a lot's happened, right? The editor has popped open for my keyboard player. If I zoom in here, I have a keyboard player region plus chords in the core track. Let's take a quick lesson and then we'll load our other session players. Cool, sounds pretty good. Let's load bass player now. All right, sweet. Let's now load drummer. All right, we have a full band ready to perform. Let's take a quick listen. It boggles my mind how good these performers and instruments actually sound. I'm not even trying to gush here. It just really blows my mind. So first, I think it's worth examining what are the session players relying on for performance cues? Obviously, tempo and time signature dictate how these session players perform within the project. If we just solo drummer here to start with, and if we make an adjustment, maybe up to 160, take a listen to the difference here. That's quite a bit different from 80. Right, and if I set this back to the original tempo of 95, and if I choose a different time signature, we'll hear an adjustment as well. Of course, because the playhead is not at bar one, Logic has to double check, do I want to create a new time signature for the entire project or introduce a new time signature at the location of the playhead? So the project could be at a time signature of 4-4 four, four for bars one and two, and then change to 6-8 for bars three and on. But I'll change it for the entire project for now. All right, so quite a bit has changed. Let's take a listen. And of course, you'll notice that bass player and keyboard player are also changing their performances. If we take a listen. Of course, something doesn't sound quite right in this situation. Because I changed the time signature from 4-4 four, four to 6-8, all of our performers are playing at that 6-8 time signature. However, the chord track right up here has not adapted. Which brings us to the chord track. All session players rely on the chord track for performance cues. If I open the editor for the drummer region and go down to the kick and snare section here, you can see that drummer is looking at the chord track right now for rhythmic cues. And the same will be said for bass player right now. As you can see, and keyboard player. But obviously with keyboard player and bass player, they also need to know what notes to play when. 
If I backtrack to the 4-4 time signature, you can see that the chords line up with each bar. Chord of C is at bar 1, D minor at bar 2, A minor at 3, so on and so forth. But when I adjust the time signature, the chord track doesn't adapt. So we're going to adapt it right now. I'm going to hold Option and hover my mouse over the right boundary of the chord track to adjust the timing of the chords. Right, so I'm time stretching them right now. So I'm going to keep stretching it till it looks about right. So we have each chord landing on each major bar. If we now take a listen. Sweet. And from then on, bass player and keyboard player just stick to an A minor until I create some new chords. But there's also the detail of pitch source, which can be found right up here in the region inspector on the left-hand side. With the keyboard player region selected, you can see that I have the option to have keyboard player either follow the chord track or its own region chords. The same can occur for the bass player region. I can set this on a per region basis. So I can have the second bass player region follow its own chords embedded in the region. while having the first bass player region follow the chord track. Now you might notice that each of these regions don't really have chords embedded in them. In that case, I'll open the editor for bass player here. Going to the chords dropdown menu, I'm going to paste the chords from the global track into this bass player region. Perfect, we now have chords embedded for bass player. And obviously our regions don't really have much going on beyond the last chord, so I'm just going to shrink them up here. So now my bass player region is following its own region chords, while the keyboard player is following the chord track. So if I make an adjustment to the chord here, just by double clicking twice, I can change the chord completely while bass player will still play a C for this one chord. So maybe I'll change this to a G major. And we'll take a listen. Right, bass player continues playing a C while keyboard player has adapted to a G. So while drummer can pretty much fit into any sort of arrangement situation, keyboard player and bass player really need you to define the chords for each and every moment so they know what to play. So in that case, if we introduce a new set of regions, you can see, especially with keyboard player, it doesn't really know what to do besides playing a single chord over and over. So you have to help your session players out by creating chords. To create a chord, you can either place the playhead at a location along the timeline and then click on this plus button to create a chord. And we'll stick with C major, so I'll just leave it at C. Let me adjust the boundary of this chord. Or you can right click or hold control and click in the chord track lane to create a new chord. And maybe I'll set this to G. So let me shrink this up as well, tighten it up. Seems to be very particular about where your mouse is actually located here. So let me just right click, create a chord. Now let's set this by double clicking. And let's set this maybe to an E. All right, and for the last chord, let's just set it maybe to an F chord. There we go. I'll shrink this up. And let's take a listen. Really simple progression, that's A-OK. -okay. But as you can see, I've created four chords and all of the session players adapt their performances to match the chords because bass player and keyboard player both have their pitch source for these two regions set to the chord track. Now, as you can see in bars one through nine, the chords seem to be grouped together. While the chords I created, bars 9 through 13, they don't seem to be grouped together. They just seem to be separate from one another, which can be really helpful. For example, if I wanted to copy and paste this G chord further down, I can. And notice I'm also copying and pasting the keyboard player region. So let me just deselect, hold option, click and drag. Maybe I'll place this right here. 
right? I can copy and paste the chords anywhere that I need them. But we can also group the chords together. If I select each and every one holding shift, right click or hold control and click, I can group these chords together. And now I can copy and paste the whole selection. But what's also really cool is when you right click or hold control and click on a chord or chord group, you can have or double the chord rhythm. So if I double the chord rhythm, check it out. The chord progression is twice as fast now. Or if I undo, right click, I can have the chord rhythm. So now I only have two chords, C and G. Beautiful. And again, if I hold option, so I see this bracket icon with the waveforms on each side, I can click and drag to extend these chords. And then maybe right click and maybe double the chord rhythm. Beautiful. I also love that you can repeat chords just like you can with a region. So if you're not familiar, if I select my keyboard player region here and then hold command and press R, I can repeat different regions and different sections. Same thing if I use the marquee tool, right? And if I hold command and press R, I repeat not only the section of the keyboard player region, but also any other selection that I make. And the same can be applied with chords. So if I hold command, press R, I can repeat a chord or an entire chord group. Now, of course, getting started with the chord track in Logic Pro and making sure that bass player and keyboard player are playing the appropriate parts for your music requires some basic sense of music theory. Let's be real, not everybody has that skill set. I have to say, I think there was a big omission with the introduction of the chord track in Logic Pro. You know me, I love Logic Pro, but I think it's really unfortunate that you can't just drag an audio region or a MIDI region into the chord track and have the chord track analyze that chord information in the region. For example, if I drag this guitar performance that I recorded up to the chord track, I get this notification that I can only drag regions that contain chords into the chord track, right? So if I try to drag and drop it, nothing happens. If I drag and drop a MIDI region, the same, nothing happens. However, if I open the Apple Loop browser, if I select an Apple Loop, that has this little musical notation right here under the key section. Let's just drag this right in onto a new track. And you can see the chords have been immediately extracted from this bookstore browse piano. If I copy and paste, you can see the chord track is copied and pasted. If I had to guess though, I'm sure Apple is well aware that users would much prefer to have Logic just automatically analyze the chord information in any type of region. So I have to imagine it will be introduced at some point. It's just a matter of when. So how do you work around this limitation? First, let's select this disco string track here and open the track inspector. And we're gonna go to the internal MIDI in, then select our disco string track. Now this seems counterintuitive. Why are we selecting the disco string as the MIDI in for the disco string? I know it doesn't seem obvious, but let's now create a chord. And right here for this chord that we've created, I plan on double clicking on the chord and selecting the MIDI input option. And watch what happens when I hit play. Look at that. The chord from the disco string has been determined by the chord in the chord track. So if I now turn this off, create a new chord right about here, Let's do it again. Now, the thing to watch out for here is that these two other chords are pretty close together. So we pretty much have to start and stop instantly. See, it's so close. All right, so if we just take a look right here, I see an E flat and it's in major. So I'm just gonna roll with that. So I'll choose E flat, major, beautiful. And then the last one here, create a new chord. Now this one, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to keep up. So let me just shrink up the region, double click and choose the MIDI input. Beautiful, there it is. There are three chords. It took a little bit of back and forth. We had to do it on a per chord basis, 
but at least Logic figured out the chords for me. For audio, it's gonna take a little more effort. So if we take a listen to this guitar performance right here, Obviously, I recorded myself playing chords. Unfortunately, Logic Pro cannot figure out polyphonic information or individual notes of a chord from an audio recording. But to at least figure out the root notes of each chord, I could use flex pitch. If I open the editor, if we take a look, I think Logic's done a pretty good job of figuring out the root notes. Not everything will be perfect, but it's at least enough to get going. With the track editor in view, I'm going to go to the edit menu and create a MIDI track from the flex pitch data. All right, so now we have all the individual notes on a separate software instrument track playing the electric vintage piano. And with all these notes selected, I'm going to hold option and drive the velocity up for all of the notes. And if we take a listen. Again, not perfect, but pretty usable. I can make adjustments to individual notes. Clean things up. Maybe just have a single note per moment. There you go. Chord information that I can then input manually into the chord track. The other thing that you could do is use a third-party plugin, such as Melodyne. There are other plugin options out there that I know other folks are familiar with. So please leave a comment below for any options that have helped you get started with a chord track for inputting that data, figuring out those chords so you can get going with the session players. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, please subscribe to Wide Logic Per Rules here on the channel or the website. And please be sure to check out the description below. I always have links to PDFs, guides, templates to help you in your journey with Logic Pro. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more next week. Take care.